So to, today, I'm on a Zoom call with the group at Hawk. Thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us today, Rupert. Um, for people that don't know you, you're a punter that has successfully used maths and speed figures and algorithms to win on both dogs and horses. Can you tell us briefly about that? Yeah, sure. Morning, Simon. Nice to chat. Um, yeah, I've always been interested in uh, in, in in maths and, uh, and 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 horse racing and uh, latterly greyhound racing, and uh, uh, so uh, I, over the years I've developed um, systems to to win in those fields, um, and uh, I've been doing it for many years now, and uh, it's it's gradually improved and uh, and, uh, and 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 gone very well. Okay, so we've we've uh, whetted people ap people's appetite with that, but we'll get back to a little bit of background first of all. Uh, so, what what is your background? Are you from a, a punting family? Uh, like a lot of your interviewees, I'm not. No, not at all. Um, parents te were teachers, and uh, I I mean I I've had a, a quite a conventional career in many respects. Um, I grew up in uh, South Leicestershire. Uh, not far from Leicester Racecourse, and um, uh, I uh, uh, I never went racing as a child. Um, the family weren't particularly interested, but um, whenever uh, I used to watch, I used to watch it on uh, on grandstand. And you remember the days when uh, our, our options were very limited, Simon, in terms of, uh, of viewing, and then latterly on on Channel Four, and. Um, uh, and I was fascinated by I was fascinated by the numbers, and I think uh, one one thing my my my, uh, my father did do was we always used to have a bet on the Grand National every year, and uh, so that was, that was our once a year. And that was always very exciting, um, and so uh, um, that that really got me more interested. Um, I used to uh, whenever I used to drive past, uh, I was driven past uh, the race course, Leicester Race Course, when we were perhaps going into town and uh, I was a bit like Charlie Bucket outside Willy Wonka's chocolate factory thinking wow I'd love to go there and then um, sort of from the age of 16 onwards I was, I was, I was pretty regularly attending um, so uh, I, I, I know I, I had a I had a uh, uh, I, I went I, I went to school and uh, and and we used to um, a few of us used to talk racing and, and was quite quite interested in it and these are the days, Simon, when um, the, the, perhaps the uh, the, uh, um, the the bookmakers perhaps weren't quite as tight with their uh, sort of underage betting, and we used to occasionally go and have a have a bet. I remember the first bet I ever had. Uh, there was uh, two or three of us at school, and we went into the library and went through the newspapers, and we selected a horse. And it was the first sort of non-Grand National bet, which was quite an exciting thing. And uh, we, uh, I remember the horse was Mano Magic. It was an old, uh, people might remember it, it as a steeplechaser in the, in the 1980s. And um, I remember rushing home from school. We went, down to, we, went down to, we went down to put the bet on and in the evening got home. And you remember the days before uh, the technologies we have now. You used to, have to read the racing results on uh, BBC Radio 2. Um, just after five o'clock or after they had a sports bulletin and um, I remember it being read out and Man and Magic won at seven to two and it was like very exciting and um, uh, from there on we, we did more of that but I think the other thing was uh, the other the other area that, of, of interest at that point was football betting now obviously again you remember very restricted you had to do trebles and, 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 and all that kind of thing you couldn't have a have a single so we used to we used to have a bet on the football we used to go and watch a lot of football and uh, we used to go and watch Leicester City. We were big Leicester City supporters, me and my friends. And we used to have, we used to, at the start of the season, we always had a, had a bet on um, them to win their, their league. In, they were either in the top league or the second league. Um, and, uh, uh, and then we'd, we'd, we'd have a bet every Saturday. And um, we, we um, I'm a, actually, I'm, I'm rather sorry I stopped doing that because I think my level stakes profit would be about 4,970 approximately um, with them having won the league recently but um, we used to do that so it's football and horses really initially that were the main main areas that and, and but then I you know I I, I, uh, I, I went to university um, well polytechnic actually in those days um, Huddersfield Poly I went to and uh, I met I met people there um, who um, into racing and we, we used to uh, we used to go to the bookmakers a lot 
there was a, there was these bookmakers, Jack Pearson. They were Jack Pearson. They're all over Huddersfield. I don't know if they're still going. Probably not. Probably swallowed up by uh, Betfred and and the like. But um, uh, we used to go in there, and, uh, and 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 that's how I sort of got into greyhound racing because we used to do quite a lot of bets on greyhound racing. So uh, that's how it sort of really got going. Okay, but you your um your forte is mathematics, uh, as far as I can gather. So where did you get? Where did your interest in that come? Because most people hate maths at school, don't they? Um, yeah, I mean, um, they do. But I, I was, I quite, I, I quite like sort of math. I'm, I'm, I'm probably a bit more objective than subjective, and we'll come on to that, I guess, because I think that's that plays a big part of what I do. Um, so, um, yeah, I always enjoyed maths. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I don't think I was the best at it. Um, far from it. I, I was in the top. Um, I was in the top uh, set for maths and um, but I was kind of I was a sort of if it was the Premier League I was sort of a bit like West Bromwich Albion that sort of level sort of struggling at the bottom a bit but hanging on in there and um, and so I, uh, uh, I I struggled a bit with it and when it came in my you remember this O levels and CSEs the old days when you had you know we used to remind me of how old I am <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it, sort of, it was just being phased out but I think I was one of the last ones to do O levels and um, uh, I did my mock uh, O level for maths and, and failed it and um, uh, I think if the inrunning comments would be sort of started slowly tailed off um, so I didn't have much chance but then they had a, uh, they had a, they had a module about probability, uh, probability theory which was sort of right down my street because I was into the horse racing and I sort of really grasped it and understood it but it was such a small part of the syllabus I thought, well, it will never be on the paper. But I thought, if it's on the paper, I might be, I might be able to squeeze through this because I know I'll get 100% on that. And um, it's probably 33 to 1 it'd be on the paper, but I was very lucky because it actually was on the paper. And I, managed, I managed to get a, a grade C in maths. Um, and uh, so it was that area of maths that I particularly enjoyed, the sort of purer maths and, and, and that kind of area. Well, give us, a, give us um, the key part of probability theory. Is there one nugget from that that you can tell us about um i think uh, i think it's i mean i was always really applying it to uh, sort of betting so uh, um it was really understanding um the chances of things happening and i think taking advantage of people's ignorance in terms of chance so um you know you might say what's the chance of um What's the chance of um, me um, rolling ten sixes on a dice in a row? And you know, it's, it's probably I don't know what it is, but it's going to be an enormous number. But some people are going to are going to say, well, that's I don't know, twelve to one or whatever. You know, it's 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 basically taking advantage of people's ignorance of things happening. Um, it's a bit like a, in a dog race, you know. If, if if trap six wins ten times in a row, it might mean that there's a there's a bias, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's a bias. You know, it's just that it's just understanding um, the real chance of things happening. And I think you know there are and, and probability theory allows you to do that. And then I think that gives you a huge advantage when you when it comes to betting. Okay, talking about betting, you're well read. Um, Nick Morden is cropped up in virtually everyone that I've interviewed, uh, Mark Cotton and Andy Bayer, Bayer, whichever it is, but did, did you sort of absorb them? Do their theories complement each other or did you take the best bits of each or did you just use it as inspiration? When I was a student, I read the Mark Cotton book on um, value betting and, um, and that helped me sort of set the foundations for, for betting um, or finding value, sort of, uh, and, and you know, it's a very, very basic system, but it gave me the foundations for uh, discipline and, and having a system to find uh, to find value. And then, of course, in those days, it was a lot easier because people were already doing these things, particularly. That was quite a groundbreaking book in many respects. Um, and then I, I was, I, what got me into all weather racing, which is kind of what I do. Um, or did I, I do less now? I do more of the greyhound stuff. But um, I, um, I I read this book by Nick Morden, um, uh, Value Bet. I can't remember what it's called. Is it Value Betting? I can't Paying remember. For a living. 
Poetry for Living, sorry, that's it. Yeah, it's a great, great book. And um, and that really opened my eyes to things. And I, I mean, it, it, I think it was a real game changer for a lot of people. So on the back of that, um, I mean, by this time I graduated and I was working, but and I and I'd got a car. So I, I lived, I was living in uh, Leicestershire, but I used to drive up the A46 on a regular basis to go up to Southern races, where I and I and I and I developed speed figures that he'd done, and uh, and uh, and I sort of just concentrated on specialised in in that. So um, and and you and using the value stuff as well. It was it was reasonably successful. And I mean, not you know, not 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 brilliant. I was still quite young and learning um and then um and then later on i i got into these andy bear books and and i and i still do it to this day i, I use the uh, bear speed figures for southern um and to be honest so i mean i i really um i mean 95 percent of my betting really is gray on racing but the five percent i do is just purely at southern which is actually my local track now and i live sort of not far away from from there now and um, haven't moved to nottingham for about 20 years ago and um, and so um, yeah, I, I use the uh, I use those figures for that and uh, and, and various other statistics. I think I think the thing about Southern is that the reason I find it, it goes back to that objective and subjective thing. It's it's not unlike greyhound racing, and as far as um, well, my mind's very objective, and uh, so it suits. I, I struggle to make money from betting on horses, any other tracks because. I think there's far more subjective requirement in there, um, but uh, at, at Southall you need to get a position. You need to get the speed ratings hold up, and the and there are and if you can understand the draw and that kind of thing, I think it makes a huge uh, gives you a huge advantage um, when you're when you're punting there. And you concentrate on Southall. I mean, is that a lot of people might concentrate on the all weather or jumps or hurdles. But is it important to you to specialise to such an extent? Is is Subble that on its own? Yeah, the surface, the fibre sun surface is absolutely very much on its own. Very very different to the other all other surfaces. Um, I mean, they have these all weather championships. I mean, sort of gets sort of I think it's rather seen as a rather sort of um, second rate in terms of uh, qualifiers and that kind of thing. Um, but the, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think the other surfaces have got more in common with grass and or turf than than it has with fibre sand. So it's, it really does stand on its own, and uh, and hence, um, and I would not uh, consider form at any other track uh, really uh, in terms of looking at uh, uh, several races. I think it's uh, it, it is so much on its own in terms of the certain, and and I, I love I love the surface, and and and, and long may it continue. So would you, was it difficult to weigh a race up where there's a lot of runners coming in, running on it for the first time? I find that quite difficult, yes, yeah. You just leave that race out and you look for this? Oh, yeah, I might, yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I'd, I'd probably, uh, you, you have to tread a bit carefully with, with horses who haven't been there. But of course, the other thing you can use there is, is the breeding. There are some very, um, uh, very specific breeding that uh, um, certain horses, I mean, the, the, the sign Mason, for example, does absolutely brilliantly at, uh, at Silver. I mean, we actually a friend of mine. Um, uh, we bought a horse um, to run at Silver. We, we 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 met a few years ago, and um, we found out that we had quite a um, a lot in common in terms of our interest in racing at Silver. And um, we, um, we we both found we had an ambition to um, have a winner at Silver. I mean, most most people I imagine have ambitions to do things like go and see the Taj Mahal or go to the Empire State Building. But our but our, our thing was to do that, and we we bought a horse and um, very cheaply we managed to get it to to win a race. Basically, we we bought it basically on its breeding. So um, so yeah, it's uh, it's one on its own, Simon. <laughs>